Top it at the tea table. Top it at the tea table. What we talking about? What we talking about? Hosted by Vanessa J. And it can't be a better way. Grab your tea and take a seat. Cause you're in for a little treat. Top it at the tea table. Hosted by Vanessa J. What's up, y'all? Welcome to another segment of Topics at the Tea Table. I'm your girl, Vanessa J. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a guest with us today. Well, let me introduce the other people that's on the panel. To my left, we have Kay. Hi, Kay. Oh, hey, girl. And we have Dee in front of me. Hey, Dee. Hello. And we have another guest. Our guest is Ian. Hey, Ian. Hey, how you guys doing? We're doing good. Welcome to another segment of Topics at the Tea Table. I always like to start with a toast. So let's grab our tea. Y'all been drinking the hell out of some tea today. <laughs> clink, 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 clink. All right. Mm -mm. Okay, ladies. So I want to piggyback on our topics from last week. I know we talked about infidelity and relationships and things of that nature. So my question for today is, what is more hurtful? If your spouse is emotionally attached, uh, attached to someone or if he's physically, you know, having sex with someone, what would be more hurtful to you if you was to find out your spouse has been cheating on you? Or can we do C all above? Oh, so all the above, mm -hmm. yeah. But sometimes people may feel that that emotional attack, uh, um, attachment is like the worst because yeah. that person has his heart, that's that he's true. thinking yeah, about that true. person all day long. He can give a dog on about you mm -hmm. because he's wondering what that person's doing. You know, he's catering to that person, make sure right. that person's okay. Because you can have sex with anybody. Right. But that emotional attachment, it's I think it's really. real. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we want to piggyback on that. What you want to talk about, D? What you think? Well, that's funny that you asked. My, me and my friend was having a conversation. She mm -hmm. has a lot of male friends. Okay. She, you know, get their opinions. She has a lot of uncles. And she was just telling me that her male friend said that men would prefer you have sex with somebody if you cheat on them before you get emotionally attached to somebody. Because okay. that's like you said. Yeah. So that's for the man. For me, I don't know. I think both would run me low. Of course, it would. Mm -hmm. It would. I agree. But I would I... rather it just be like a hit it and quit it thing or mm -hmm. but not for you to be emotionally attached to somebody because yeah. that goes into the old saying, even though I don't believe in it anymore, of mm -hmm. soul ties. You connected oh. to that person. Exactly. That so. connection is real. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ian? I'm still torn because when you're at physical with somebody, mm -hmm. um, I don't think I can get that image out of my head. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That you've been intimate with somebody. Yeah. Um, I get the whole emotional piece of it too. I agree that can be um, mind boggling too. I would have to choose physical. Mm -hmm. Wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, it's I get something about because I think yeah. for me that's another level. Yeah. When you're connecting like that. Right. Right. No matter how you try to spin it. Yep. That's why they, they keep coming back because it's not going to be a one time thing. Let's be for real. Exactly. I I agree. I I feel you with that, especially with the physical thing. You're right. It'll be that image in your head all the time. Or I think we talked about it last week when he's gone. If he don't answer the text or ask right. your phone call, right. what is he doing? Is right. he with her? Right. Even if he apologized and it will never happen again, mm -hmm. but I still <laughs> think in the back of your mind, you think, okay, he off today. I'm at home. Mm -hmm. He not at home. He not answering. Right. What is he doing? Right. So I get it. What about you, Kay? Um, for me, I would have to say I would lean more toward emotional, just speaking from a, my personal self. Mm hmm I am able, and I, you know, people can take this how they want to, mm -hmm. but I can physically connect with someone without having feelings for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. then be done with them. Yeah. Me, myself, personally. Mm -hmm. And so, me knowing how much it takes for me to get emotionally involved mm -hmm. and emotionally tied to somebody, mm -hmm. that requires effort from me. Mm. For me to like smash, you know, that doesn't require much effort, you right. know. Right. And so if my person, my spouse or whomever is giving someone that much of themselves where emotions become involved, mm -hmm. like that's painful. Mm -hmm. You know, because let's get real. Nowadays, physical is just that. It's physical. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me to, to give your heart to somebody, like that's everything for me. Mm -hmm. So I think I would have to say, yeah, emotional would really tear me up. So, you know, if you think about it, like, 
it's this show that just came out um, with Lauren on there on BET. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I saw the uh-huh. pilot, right? Oh, and, okay. um, I haven't seen the pilot. You I'm haven't seen the pilot? Yeah, the pilot's there. I guess she's not recording <laughs> the first now. The episode came on. The first episode did come on? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I was thinking like maybe she took a break, you know, from right. filming or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what's the title? Do you remember the title? The uh, games people play. Yeah, the games people play. Yeah, like and she's married to a celebrity basketball player. Mm-hmm. And he is like freaking everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. And she knows some of the stuff he's doing. So this on a pilot episode, she kind of like set him up to see if he's still out there doing what he's doing. Mm-hmm. So when they was making love, whatever, she scratched his back. And it's this blogger who she's sleeping with. Mm. She put it all out there on social media. Mm-hmm. And so she noticed that back. So my question would be, if you married to someone mm-hmm. and knows he's cheating, he's constantly coming back, no, I'm not, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Why do we or some of us continue to stay? Is it because of the money? Is it because of the status? Is it because of the fact that yeah, they do have a kid together? Mm-hmm. But why are women still staying in these relationships knowing the proof the proof is in a pudding is everything is there on right. so everything is there right in front of your face. Mm-hmm. What is the reason why people still just just deal with it? Fear. Because because of the security, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the kids, you think about what the what ifs. If I'm to, if I do this, what's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. I've spent so many years doing this. How do how do I even get back into the game right. mm-hmm. of dating right. right and being connected to somebody again like mm-hmm. that? Then what if that person hurt me mm-hmm. like he's been doing? So I think it's just and it all ties to fear, mm-hmm. right? But you mentioned too, uh, Ian, about that physical aspect. You thinking in your head like you right. just seeing that visual right. of him being somebody else, right? And it's clear that he's been with somebody else. Do you continue to make love to your husband? God, that we talked about that. That would be hard for me to yeah. do that. No, seriously. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, I would not want your thing going beside me at all. That is hard. Especially if you know what he's been doing. Would you still have sex? It's so, okay now. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I, you know, it's hard to say, but I'm, I'm assuming that if I'm choosing to stay to work it out, then eventually... Mm. It's going to have to happen, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're not working it out. Like a relationship in real life doesn't exist without it, okay. right? And so, if I'm choosing to stay, then at some point, I do have to give in. If I'm choosing to forgive you, I have to forgive every aspect of it, okay? You know, and so the, and that it, takes time, it may take right? time, mm-hmm. and it can yeah. take prayer and, and everything right. else. But if I'm giving you the opportunity to forgive you, you gonna give me as much time as I require. Is that mm-hmm. part? You know, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. much. To be totally honest, even when me and my husband um, had that issue, okay, and even though he said that nothing didn't happen, mm-hmm. I still had that in the that back image, of your mind. right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Even like what it would look like. But when mm-hmm. I chose my marriage, mm-hmm. I had to let that go. Okay, did it take time? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. did mm-hmm. he go through some things of me taking time? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You want to work through this or not? Yes. Okay. So this this is the path that you chose, so you're right. going to let me take my time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it worked out good for you that way. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, I wonder if they do men allow you that time, knowing you need that time to, you know, get your, you know yourself again <clears throat> and right. to like, okay, this marriage got to work. We have children together, you right. know, things of that nature. But sometimes men are like, well, you know, you take it too long. Forget Some it. Some men don't allow you to take that time. Mm-hmm. And then that's probably a man that's not worth staying. Mm, okay. You know, if, if they yeah. don't give you the time, like you created this situation, right, right, exactly. right. so you gonna right. allow me to give myself whatever solution I require. Right. right. And if you can't, then this is a problem you gonna deal with because ultimately you the one who's supposed to be wanting to keep me. Right. Exactly. By right. any means necessary. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And to the first point of your question, I think a lot of people stay like kind of like Dee was saying, people get stuck more so in routines versus with the person they're That's actually true. with. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, your day-to-day has consisted of you and this person doing X, Y, Z every single yeah, every day. Every single right. day, right. And right. so you don't want to have to figure out a new routine. Mm-hmm. Right. And so sometimes you just rather stick with the same routine just like you stick with the same job even mm-hmm. though you know right. it's a better one out there for you. Right. right. You're comfortable where you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just right. reality, you know. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of time also is a um, it's the image. Yeah. People mm-hmm. do not there want to ruin right. their image. image. Yeah. Even when yeah. we go through it, people are not so quick to even admit that. Okay, I went through this because image. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very mm-hmm. true. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I see the part with that with the image because I remember when I was engaged, I think for the third time, with this crazy <laughs> dude. <laughs> this crazy 15. dude. And I was so right, right, That's 15, right, yeah. Third time, guys. <laughs> so the third time, fourth time mm-hmm. I got married. So but anyway, so when I was engaged <laughs> the third time. The dude had issues, and when he proposed to me, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. It's, you know, this is supposed to be, well, the high school sweetheart or whatever. He got himself together, blah, blah, blah. And come to find out, it didn't work out. You know, mm-hmm. he was crazy. It didn't work out or whatever. But I was so excited about the ring and the image. Mm-hmm. So even though we didn't broke up, why I'm still trying to wear this ring mm-hmm. and I had to go back because it was some issues that happened where I had to take off a couple of days mm-hmm. um, from work and then when I got back what am I going to tell people mm-hmm. what am I going to tell people that me because everybody excited for me what am I going to tell people that I'm not engaged anymore mm-hmm. but I had to like okay well what's more important you know me being in a crazy relationship with a fool Right. You know, or trying to save my image. But a lot of, I get the, what you're saying too. Image is everything. Mm-hmm. It is everything. Mm-hmm. And Especially in this, in this technology. Day and age. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And some people like, because my husband, he's very private. You know, he mm-hmm. don't want everybody to know what's going on in his relationship. Me, I'm like, oh, we're doing this too. He says, stop putting stuff on social media. Right. You know, don't nobody ever need to know what you're doing. Right. So I get that part or whatever. But still, you know, you're so excited about things or whatever. And if people can all imagine, assume that something's going on when they don't see you on social media or they don't see you and your spouse together taking pictures or going here going there yeah. so you're right mm-hmm. image is everything so when you was going to your situation in did it like feel that did you feel that you say even though it didn't happen or whatever mm-hmm. but were you taking that next step thinking that it's about to, about to be over like we're going to go to the next step like we're going to divorce we're going to be done with it or whatever or you at never first. Had, at first mm-hmm. you had that thought mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. stopped you um, my support system there you go. was everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister, she said something funny to me because mm-hmm. it seriously had to been a God thing. Okay. Because when I say he changed so quickly, mm-hmm. like he really humbled himself. Okay. And, um, I was staying with my parents. Okay. And so my sister was, um, she was like, listen, like they say, in order to get over a, re, um, a relationship, <laughs> <laughs> you get with a new nigga. Right. <laughs> like, go home to that new nigga. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, it was a support system. Oh it's it's who you have another direction. <laughs> right. We left a little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. I totally get that. that. Mm-hmm. Support systems are everything. It's everything. You yeah. gotta have yeah. the right people yeah. around the marriage. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not just love you, but love who you with. Yeah. Right, right. And who wants the best for you. There you yeah. You know. Yeah. And what are you all thoughts about telling people your business? Because when I got married, um, our we was in marriage counseling. Mm-hmm. It's to keep your stuff to yourself. Even when we got married, you know, it's to keep your business, your household to yourself because it could be situations where you ready to give it up. Like, you know, I'm done, I'm done, I'm right, done. Right. He did this, this, this and that or whatever. And as soon as you tell those girlfriends or whatever, Oh, you should leave, or your family members, right. and the next thing you know, you guys didn't work it out, but they still me mugging him when they come to the house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you all share your personal relationship, so, and marriage, and stuff with other people? For me, and you know, kind of like Kay said earlier, mm-hmm. and just for me, but <laughs> <laughs> when I was going through things in my marriage, it was some tough stuff, some mm-hmm. heavy stuff that mm-hmm. I knew mm-hmm. people around me would pop their tops. Okay, you know, but I kept it to myself. Yeah. You know, just thinking like. You know, I'm supposed to work this out right. between me and him mm-hmm. or whatever the mm-hmm. case may be. So when things got real bad and ugly, and I'm like, I'm done. I mm-hmm. can't. So when I confided in my support system, they like, it ain't that bad. Mm-hmm. Because in their mind, they think you've never complained or said anything before. Mm-hmm. Right. So I felt like that kind of, I know you're supposed to do it, but it kind of backfired on me because I was beefing with my support system. Mm-hmm. Like, what don't y'all understand? I'm right. telling you that right. this is. Right, right. But they like, well, going... no, it, it can't be that bad. No. Right. He not doing that. He not yeah. like that. Uh-uh. It's, come right. on. 
Yeah. And I'm like, no. Like you had to really videotape him or something. Right. <laughs> because they just wasn't getting it because, like, mm-hmm. you've been going so many years, you ain't said nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with that. Like, mm-hmm. I, some things, yeah. Like, I'm not going to run and tell everything. Right. But sometimes some things, I think, need to be said or you need to vent about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ain't tell nobody. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. I don't know. Yeah, because I have an issue. I, like, hold stuff in, you mm-hmm. know, because I don't want to. Shit, when I'm ready to disclose, I'll disclose. Right. You know? But that's with a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. like, telling my business or whatever. Mm-hmm. Finally, I will disclose or whatever. Yeah. So, are you a private person when it comes to that? Okay. I think it's important to have at least one person that you can share everything mm-hmm. with. Okay. And for me, it's one of my sisters, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable telling her because, A, I feel like I respect her advice and okay. her opinion. Yeah. I feel like more than anything, she's always going to have my best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. And just like I can take it to my grave, she will do the same. Gotcha. Like, I, trust, I will trust her with my life, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's always important to have at least one person because because just like Dee said, you know, it's important to be able to vent stuff out because mm-hmm. sometimes holding stuff in and internalizing it is doing more damage than it is mm-hmm. good. Yeah. So even if it's a therapist, if you don't have a friend or a family right. member who you feel like you can tell everything to, mm-hmm. like certain stuff is just too deep to hold in to yourself. Like right. you need to go through it with mm-hmm. somebody else in order to make it through it. Right. So, right. Yeah. you know, I don't tell my business to everybody because everybody don't have my best interest at exactly. heart. Exactly. Right. But totally for those that. who do, I definitely, I respect mm-hmm. the opinions of those I care about. Right. You I private? Agree. I agree with that. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about our young people, guys. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts? Let's say this scenario um, occurred. Well, first of all, you all know we, our young people, idolize these celebrities, right? Mm -hmm. You you watch your love and hip-hop shows. You watch your basketball wives and all this other stuff. And our young people really, really idolize them. So, what are your thoughts about these celebrities as in same-sex relationships? You know, last year, a couple years ago, you had Erica and Mina. You know, loving mm-hmm. hip-hop folks, right? Mm-hmm. Two ladies loving each other, right? Loving on each other. Then you have uh, KD and Monice. Y'all know she back uh, gay again, right? She back to lesbian again. Yeah, Monice from uh, Love and Hip Hop, really? New York. Yeah, after who? Oh, she was just she with Daily She was Dayleon. just Daily Dayleon, right? She was just with him, but he didn't want her no more. So now she back with AD, right? Yeah, okay. She's all on Instagram and stuff. I feel like that was never really done anyway, but exactly right. So so now she back because that's this clear, like on the headline. It's a headline, you know. She's back. The last video is like okay. So what are your thoughts about if? One of our children, or if you have advice for people that may be going through something like this, whereas they come home and they're noticed that they're hanging out with the same sex pretty quite frequently. And I know we witnessed this when we was in the school system. We saw the middle-aged kids outside doing some of everything, girls right. on girls, some of everything was like discussed, like right? right. So they seeing it from somewhere. So now it's all on social media, it's all on television. So it's right there, blading in your face. So what do you do if it's people out there that have children, that have a young lady, a young girl who's growing up kind of confused, do you like embrace it? Do you feel like, oh, you want to pray it, you beat it out of her, you just start mm-hmm. taking the church every Sunday, put them slips mm-hmm. back on? Or what do you do actually with that case when you have a young male or a young female daughter or son who's came home and disclosed to you that I'm, you know, um, gay or I'm a lesbian now? If for me, or like if, if one of my- my kids? One of your kids, or you know someone, what oh, advice would you okay. give to that? But start off and say if it was your child. Okay. If your child came home like that, what would you do? So, you know, when you when you have a kid, you're as soon as the kids start brewing in your belly, you're their automatic protector. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you already know that your child, being African, African-American, male, female, they already up against some things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, this for me would be like another thing that they'll be up against. Right. You know, it's, it's cold, it's cruel people out here. Yep. The environment. And then, like, you know, uh, what I've been taught growing up. So, mm-hmm. you know, and my spirituality plays a big part. Okay. So, in my head, I'm like, this is my this is my child. I'm thinking about the things I've been taught. Like, oh, God, Simon right. and Gamora. You know, exactly. You right. know, mm-hmm. going to hell. You don't, you don't, Atlanta. But yeah, right. Atlanta. <laughs> right. So, I'm going to automatically go in protective mode. Okay. But, you know, 
I love mm-hmm. my child so much. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be the whole thing with you gotta go with yeah. Buddies and other. Yeah. It's it's kind of like what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like what I'm gonna automatically ask myself, what did I do? Right. The parents just, actually I, disown their kids when they come out. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it's very sad. Yeah. And I'm I'm a teacher mm-hmm. and I just had a conversation with my kids. Mm-hmm. We were talking about that and um, because some people believe that people are born like that. Mm-hmm. And I've had conversations with people about that, you know, giving different opinions, not mm-hmm. argumentative, but we just had conversation right. about, you know, how we mm-hmm. feel. So I was asking the kids, because, you know, some t- kids have, like, a fresh view yeah. on mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's innocent, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. And so they started expressing to me, I teach eighth graders. Okay. So they 12, 11, 12, mm-hmm. some of them 13. Mm-hmm. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> It just rains, it's fluctuating. But anyway, Wait, there shouldn't be no 11 in the eighth grade. No. I, I said 11. I meant to say. Because right. 13, they know they should be 13, right? right? right. 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 I meant to say 15 and 16. <laughs> Sorry. And I did just look at the ages because they up for summer school and I'm looking like, I got a 16. <laughs> But they were saying that um, some they went through things. That was the yeah. the, the majority of them mm-hmm. who felt like they were gay mm-hmm. went through something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It I wasn't see. like they never felt like they was born like that. It's like right. they went through something, some type of mm-hmm. trauma. Yep. Or um abuse. One, right, or abuse. Mm-hmm. One girl even said now, you know, this eighth grade, but one girl even said that when she was like in the third or fourth grade, she had a little boyfriend and he said something bad about her and told her she was fat or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And she felt like, well, and then they see it on T V, so yeah. she mm-hmm. felt like, Well, maybe I'm just supposed to be with girls. Mm-hmm. And so she started liking girls. Right. That see, one incident, you see, only in the third, fourth grade. So that right. means nobody else was pouring into her. Exactly. That you're beautiful. Right, yes. right. Oh, Giving that reassurance, yes. like you're fine. Yes. You're, you the know, the demographic of our kids, it's, it's about like school wide, about 80% no mm. daddies. Right. Yeah. You know, right. being raised by grandma and yep. them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. mama, okay, but mama works so hard, I hardly right. ever see her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got one baby mm-hmm. who gets picked up at the end of the day every day because he has to go home and babysit. Wow. Yep. So I accommodate. Yeah. And one of our partner um, teachers is another race. Mm. So, and, but she is so like for equality, for the people. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't wrap her man around why is she picking up this, her son every day to babysit? I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to tell her she can't. Don't do that. Right. But they don't get it. Right. You know, mm-hmm. the community, you cannot do that. You don't come at a parent mm-hmm. who working yeah. hard. Right. Doing right. Her Two best. or three jobs. Right. Doing mm-hmm. her best. Right. And you coming at her. Right. Knocking her down. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. right. So, it's you know, not. Trying to right. explain it to her. I, yeah. I understand what you're saying because she really do have a heart. But mm-hmm. kids, we understand what you're saying, but mm-hmm. don't do that. Right. Let me tell you why. Right. Mm-hmm. This right. is what it is. Mm-hmm. Right. This Pull it to the side. Signed up for. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know right. what I'm and saying? And you have to be able to relate. If you right. can't relate, you acknowledge it. Right. Wrong field mm-hmm. to right. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge it and accept it. And you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so like a lot of them has been through something. You know, I had one student. He um, he moved from uh, down south okay. and came here to stay with an uncle. Who felt like he was going to beat it out of him. Mm-hmm. Let me raise him. His mama died shortly after giving birth to him. Yeah. Daddy never was around. Right. So he's staying with grandma and aunties. Mm-hmm. So he like bring him here. Mm-hmm. So he came here like full blown flamboyant. So you know he asked me one day to take him to church. So he, I'm not going to turn you down. Right. So I started taking him to church with me. And he told me like when he was in the third grade. A neighborhood boy who was older. Molested him. See? Mm-hmm. And that's how yeah. So now he like boys. He feel like that's what, you know. And so the uncle thought he was just going to beat it out of him. He would call me. And I couldn't get too wrapped up in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I would have conversations with the uncle. I developed a relationship with the uncle. But I'm just like, you can't beat this out of him. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not going right. so, like, he didn't even last the whole school year. Maybe about two months ago, the auntie called me. Mm-hmm. And, like, I got to come and get him. Mm-hmm. Because he's not happy. He's stressing out. Because the uncle is steady. Like, I'm going to beat this out of you. I'm right. going to talk to you about it don't work like killing it does. Left they right. are. Exactly. They so are. They it was just something happened them. recently. Yes. When somebody committed suicide. Yes. You know, it's a serious thing. Yeah. So what are your thoughts, Kay, about this? Like, would you <laughs> embrace, you know? I mean, I don't think I would quite go, like, 
Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union. Right. Like, take my 11-year-old right. to a gay pride parade. Right, right. Like, yeah. I'm not embracing it to that extent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But kind of like D said, I'm never going to disown my child right. for right. anything. Right. Um, mm-hmm. If nothing else, I'm going to try to figure out where did this stem from. Right. right. Like, mm-hmm. I've Communication I've, has yeah, to be there. Mm-hmm. I've uh, read this one girl posted her story on Facebook. She's a beautician. She lives in India. And she has been married twice, has two children, and finally told her story one day. She now deals with women. Mm-hmm. And she said that she knew from the age of nine years old that she wanted to be with women. Mm-hmm. However, she consistently tried to conform herself mm-hmm. to what society wanted her to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then at one point, she came to realize that she had to be who she truly was. Mm-hmm. And so for her, it wasn't a traumatic experience. It's something that she really came to believe mm-hmm. was who she was, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so I feel like you, as, a, as a parent, you can only support your child the best you can. Right. You can't blame anything on TV, mm-hmm. you know, because everything starts at home. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. just like mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. saying my, my child not learning right because her teacher's not good. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, what are you doing at home right. to right. shelter, to protect, to prepare mm-hmm. your right. child for the things that this world is going to bring to them? Mm-hmm. And so, kind of like D said, first thing I'm doing is looking at myself. Right. What am I not doing? What right. should I be doing? What right. can I do differently? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to pray that spirit about them but I definitely want to turn my back because right. that would make them act out even more mm-hmm. even more right mm-hmm. and wouldn't want to share anything with right. you yeah. you know right. so it'll be worse right yeah. so I'm gonna love you just like God love us when we do wrong right yeah yeah and then I'm like they said going to my prayer warriors yes yes we all been down right right Laying on altar. Yes, yes. Okay. So what about you? Well, I feel that um, if this were to happen, like I said, I agree about the embracing part, but like you said, society's kids are constantly being bullied, you know, all the time, being stigmatized, and next thing you know, they end up taking their own life due to Mm -hmm. what society is saying about them, or they feel they're not accepted. So me as a parent, it would be hard for me. I'm going to let you know that now. It will be hard for all of us. Mm It would be very, very hard. Like, okay, the image thing. Mm -hmm. What are people going to say? You know, things in that nature. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. You say something wrong. Right. But that's still your child. So you know you have to accept it and love them and find out how can we change this? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we need to do? Or whatever. But if, what if they, because that's a good thing, how can we change right. it? But what if they don't want to change? Now, listen, I, be, I believe in who I serve. Yes. 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 So you believe in God. Yes. God would even cross my mind. He, you know, he, he's going to fix it. But that's awesome. Delivered. Right. And I delivered. <laughs> right. Delivered. <laughs> I totally agree with that. But you know how is some of those that's inside the church. You're right. Yes. You're right. In the choir. You're so right. That's how I know like something is It's starting to be brood. more in yes, the church. Yes. It's more in the church. Baby. Yes. It's more in the church and it's sad the next thing you know they're catching stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Getting all these diseases that you can't get rid of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then they spread it. Or you yeah. got some that's confused as bi right. and they give it to the girl and the guy. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? So it would be a hard thing but whatever. Like you said, prayer works. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I'm not going to go to the store and I'm going to stay in the men's section. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, <laughs> right. Right. Now, if he dwindled all to the other side, right. and I'm like, come on back over here. Right. You know? <laughs> way. I know. I know a young lady. She my age. We used to, we used to uh, be in the same church circuit. Mm-hmm. She was she was the stud, as okay. they call it. Like, yeah. she, you know, changed her wardrobe, changed her looks, and she mm. was never going to be with... Um, a man again mm. but she wrote a book she actually goes to um another a, church another church yeah, okay a big church okay, okay mm-hmm. that's known in the community okay and she wrote a book and um how and she believes that it was god that changed her like and so really this year she celebrated her i think they third year of marriage yeah she married to a, a man Mm. She oh. be- yeah, she believes that God gave her complete. I didn't. My mom brought her book. I haven't okay. read it, but mm-hmm. like I know her personally, and she just big on talking about her uh, her testimony. Yeah, it was just like a transformation for right, her. Right, right. And I, I was shocked because I'm some. You know, sometimes I <laughs> it may be judgmental, but sometimes I look at people like they ain't coming back. Right, mm-hmm. this is just their lifestyle. This is mm-hmm. what they gonna mm-hmm. do, mm-hmm. and they know. Mm-hmm. And that's what I said about her. So you know, sometimes you can't. 
Judge. Look at you can't, right. you can't look right. right. You got to look at, and right. she comes from a praying family. I yeah. know when her family was praying, they probably stayed on their faith. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. But you, you know. can't do the abusive thing like you. The uncle was beat him out right. because right. that's yeah. not going to change your thing. Right. right, not at all. You no. know. Yes. But I know when I lived in Atlanta, y'all, for that little um, a year, mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. one year, two thousand two, yeah. two thousand three, one year. When y'all talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, like it really? was the worst. I li- I lived in Smyrna, like a suburban town, but I worked in Atlanta. So when I went down to the underground and the club stuff out there, Linux. Linux, the Ooh, Linux Mall baby. is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Cool. And it's baby. like yeah. the prettiest girl mm-hmm. is with the stud looking doo-doo. Yeah. I'm like, if you want a doo-doo, you could have got with a do a man. That's, that's yeah. the part I don't understand. Right. I will want to know yeah. like, how does that work? Like, that's why it was if you want to do that, get you another chick that looks like like a chick. Exactly. But right. See, I see, and I, I only know this because I'm going to ask the perspective. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. My best friend's sister mm-hmm. is the stud okay. in her relationship. She okay. wants to carry herself as a guy, but she don't want, like, she's not the one who wants to be referred to as man. Okay. Like, she still acknowledges the fact that she's a woman, but her mm-hmm. demeanor, mm-hmm. low fade haircut, yeah. basketball shorts mm-hmm. type situation. Right. Gotcha. And her girlfriend is a girly girl. Mm-hmm. And so, when I ask her, I'm like, you know, if if this is your type, like why don't you just want a man? Mm-hmm. And so she told me it's different. Like mm-hmm. it's not that they want a man; they want the touch of a woman. It's not the look that they mm-hmm. after. Mm-hmm. It's the different kind of sensations that a woman offers. Like em- it's more of an emotional tie. Okay. It's not a physical mm-hmm. appearance that they going after. Okay. Like this just happened to be the look that the person had that I connected with. Okay. Mm-hmm. But in some cases, they do want a more stud type. Like mm-hmm. they. They want the look of a guy, but they want the touch of a woman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like how you phrase you that. Know, yeah. And right. so they, yeah. they it just. must be the wordplay, too, because we know what to say. <laughs> there yeah. you go. And there you, you go. If you think about it, you think about yourself with a man and how you had to guide your man to be able to deliver what you wanted. Exactly. For him. Right. right. So and women as, already know. You are right. already know. They already know you up already top. Know. What's your I, sensitive yep. spot yes. and where to be t- Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. see, mine was the opposite. I did ask when I lived in Atlanta. No, that was in Chicago, on the north side, because they, a lot of folks on yeah. the north side, right? Different folks. But anyway, <laughs> so on the north side, we was at this club and I asked these guys who was all gelling with the guys. Guys were guys. I right. Why y'all? Y'all are fine. Y'all are not even looking like y'all all what God is racist. Come on now. So I'm like, I'm like, why are you all like that? But they said they were so hurt by women. Wow. Like women really hurt them. Wow. I'm like, did he hurt you to the core like so that? To make that switch Please. like that? Right. But it was a nice looking guy. Just like you all see the nice looking girls. That's why I was shocked, like I said, a couple of years ago with the celebs, uh, Erica Mina and um uh what's up the girl's name? Erica and um, the one with Safari now. She ain't with Erica Mina. That's Erica Mina. Who's the other one? Sense. Yeah, Sense. Yeah, Sense. Yeah, yeah. And those two pretty girls, right? You know, and they was really, really in love with each other. They were. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. It was crazy. You don't think so? I never believed Sin. Really? I see. I felt like I believed Sin more than Erica. No, I think Erica was more invested. I feel like Erica oh. was more like in it for TV and Sin got wrapped up. Because if you think about it, Erica was the first girl Sin dealt with. She was. And so initially it was like, right. and then she failed. Mm-hmm. She failed. That's mm-hmm. why she's crying. You, you ain't rich though. <laughs> like all the time. Because right. I think she ended up falling for Erica like that. But the mm-hmm. whole time Erica was trying to Erica for coins. Yeah. Whatever direction you want me to go in, I'm going as long as that check that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted everybody. Right, right. right. She right. want them coins, baby. Right. <laughs> so, before we close out, what if, I'll probably want to say this for next time, but we can start on it, whatever you guys like. What if, you know how we all went to college, right, and mm-hmm. we found out that we know, okay, we know women, you know, experience things in college. Mm-hmm. Men experience things in college, right? Right. So, <laughs> why are you looking I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to edge my People experience stuff all the time in college. Oh, okay. Do you all know people who have done, been with another same sex when you all were off to school? Oh, who child? Yeah. I thought you were going to say, what if you found out your man? Right, and he found out. So, so say if that was was the case, 
Have you ever been with somebody who finally disclosed to you that they was in a relationship with the same sex? No, no but it, it would be best that they don't. <laughs> yeah, because I'm done. Right. Yes. Yes. I'm done, done. right. I'm done, done. But what if it's? But right. what if it's? But what I'm if you so caught up in it? It's love. You all have a family, and he didn't disclose to you. Mm. Y'all drinking? Oh, y'all don't even have to be drinking. Y'all, just, you know what? See, it's something I haven't mm-hmm. told you before. Mm-hmm. Remember, no. Tim used to come over the house. <laughs> no, no. no. So, remember my buddy Tim. You were looking like Tim, like Mm-mm. Tim ain't back in this house biased. no more. This may be biased, but I think it's harder for me to see that for a man. Come on, man. When you cross over as a man, yeah, maybe you still thinking about that. Yeah, I can't. I would never be able to look at you any other way but bent over. Yeah, yes. All my the time, respect right? for you yeah. would be. Out yes. the window. But like, you have a family. <laughs> what if you have a family? I don't Listen. care. And I'm watching you around my son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm so, you. so that's the thing. Do you divorce? I'm yeah. Gone. I'm and gone. So it's, oh, it's totally done, oh, right? So over with? Rocky. I would give my husband checks. And he would <laughs> <laughs> <he's> like, <laughs> take my finger and swipe them and grab it. He'll be ready to fight. I'm like, okay, you're not good. <laughs> really really happens you know what I'm saying so I know it's women and men out here listening and what do you do if they find it's close you baby this is something I need to tell you I'm going hard and then I'm pissed that you held something because you for so long you you know me Right. You know, if if, if right. you my husband, if I didn't let you into me like that, you know right. something like that was. But if you say it was a one over. time thing, one time, no. long time ago, <laughs> no. you know, before he crossed, mm-hmm. you know, he had you to do told such, me that such. Before I said I'd do it, let me decide what yeah. I want. Come right. on, man. Right. Don't ever yeah. steal my choices. To be fair, from me. right? Yeah, right. To be when fair. you knew we were getting deep into it, like to, to the point where you feel like you're about to propose to me, you right? Me know that. So why right. is it acceptive to accept it? Is acceptive a word? Why? You don't have to. <laughs> why is it accepted? Why is it accepted when women do it? You know what I'm saying? If a woman were to disclose to their husband, you know, I got with K, I didn't get with J, da 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 da, or whatever. It's like, for real, bring it up, you want to do it again? It's, it's like, like the, a double standard. It's a, yeah, double it's right. a definite it's double, double standard. But it's dependent, too, because some mm-hmm. men don't go for that. Yeah, right? that's like, true. Some men right. ain't wanting to shed a woman or wanting to hear that at all. Right. Mm-hmm. And. Like some men find it sexy, yeah. but for me, there's nothing, nothing at all about two men. I'm not at all. I'm not at all. Right? There's no. nothing you can say no. or do. I don't mm-hmm. care how much money you have. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering, like, for people that's out there, you know, all my. That's uh, a good question. T listeners, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and they may be going through some things, and you know, it may feel like, dang, my dude just told me this yesterday. You know, <laughs> we got Pack three kids. <laughs> what would you say to her, D? <laughs> Don't look back. Pack up, but she love them, D. She love they have three well, kids together. If she's in that, and she pregnant again. Mm. Oh. she pregnant again. If she's in that man friend, well, like, but I love him. So I will never be the one. Right. I don't care how close we are. I'll mm-hmm. never be the one to tell you to leave your husband. Right. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the right. same right. person. Right. 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 Me either. Me and either. even yep. if you go through it, this is another topic, but even if you go through it, I'm still not that friend that's going to celebrate your divorce. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I see that a lot. When people mm-hmm. say, I'm so happy for my girl. He finally yeah. got rid of I'm not celebrating. Right. Mm-hmm. Because they right. say divorce is like a death. Mm-hmm. So if my friend tell me somebody close to her dad, we're not celebrating that. Right. We, we mourning that. Yeah. So if my girl tells me she has a divorce you know mm-hmm. and that she distraught about it I'm not celebrating it mm-hmm. right. you know I'm gonna mourn with you I'm gonna that's help right. you through this it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not a great thing right, right. and that's nobody a mourning situation exactly. if he to tell you this right. nobody gets married to get divorced <laughs> right so even so if she telling me she loved this man who done been on Brokeback Mountain <laughs> <laughs> several times to each his own like, okay I'm well, right. right. support right. you alright well mm-hmm. alright well, what, what we finna do, girl? What you want? My ass husband ain't coming over there. Go ask that phone so you can please get up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give her the best advice I can. Right. 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 Get the strap like 50 say. Like, what you... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's so another thing too. They do say something about the celebrity. I don't want to be dogging our celebrities, but you know, they right. said what happened with Puff and some of them. Other, but yeah. we don't know. Right. We're not we there right. or whatever. But people do say they go yeah. to those different clubs mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that where they getting in with the little 
what they do. Um, the strap on? Yeah, the straps, stuff, yeah. whatever. So, I don't know, ladies. I just wanted to bring that up because there's some tea listeners out that there that go through some stuff like that. And, to each its um, own, baby. Right. It is. Right. It is. Me, right. No, you. You'd be right out of there. You'd be out of, because it's no, like you. you wouldn't want to bring another male over there. You're going to be looking at his boy, John or right. Tony, like, dude, we do come over here a lot. Right. Right. You know, right. what are you doing? Now I can't trust nobody around. No, I can't trust no girl. I can't trust no dude. I can't trust a dog. What the hell? You know? So, right. Right. So, yeah, I'm sorry. It's too much. Right. It is. Even too for a male, I wonder that, like, after you find out that your wife or whoever you with used mm-hmm. to date women, right? Do they still have that insecurity? Right. I think they. Yeah. Might. They might. Yeah. They, they so might. insecure about other stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They might, and it's been some women, like I told you before, that's been turned out. The man can't please them, like you mentioned before. They can't please you the way you want to be pleased. They just stay that way, or they might front, you know, for the image. Mm-hmm. They may go ahead and marry a man, but deep down, deep down inside, they may be in love with another woman. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, or they best friend, and well, you think they their best friend, but they, but they or forcing themselves to conform, conform to what society. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Some so, people really do force themselves they to do. live an unhappy life to please others. Right. Yeah. And that's so unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very important. So, T listeners out there, be you. Be the woman you are and the man you are. Stand for yourself, you know, because no one and have that good support system. And you ain't got to take no mess from nobody. Mm-hmm. And you ain't got to conform to what others want you to, mm-hmm. you know, what society is telling you to do. But thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for joining me today. Yes, that was a pleasure. Welcome to another yeah, pleasure. segment of yes, Topics at the Tea Table with your girl, Vanessa J. Let's close out with a toast. Yes. Clink, 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 clink. We have different glasses today, guys, we okay? We don't have my... <laughs> We have the right one. We have my style mule cup. And we have different tea, okay? Yes. I guess my tea. D, was my tea good? You want to tell me my tea was good yeah. last time? You know. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. She ain't had no honey. <laughs> Get that shit out of here. Listen, I'm not going to tell you that D called me. <laughs> I, I won't tell well, you, you won't that she tell called me, me that. and had some questions. <laughs> I got my tea. I took that tea up that box. Girl, I had a pot on the stove. <laughs> Make sure that tea got in that water got hot. My tea listeners, before we close out. <laughs> I say, boo, you could have told Girl, me you needed tea. Y'all actually have tea kettles at home. Come on now, tea listeners. If y'all know good darn well, y'all get that pot, put that water in there, let that water boil, put that tea bag in there, pour it in the cup. That's how we do. And like I said, listeners, y'all ain't at home hosting topics at the tea table. Okay. Oh, y'all yeah, make sure y'all like and subscribe. Top of the tea table with your girl Vanessa J. Signing out. Bye bye. Topics at the tea table. Topics at the tea table. What we talking about? What we talking about? Hosted by Vanessa J. And it can't be a better way. Grab your tea and take a seat. Cause you're in for a little treat. Topics at the tea table. Hosted by Vanessa J.